We're now going to move on to splinting the humerus. While a humerus fracture is not the most common fracture you're going to encounter, we want to talk about it because we have to adapt some of the techniques and change them slightly to better treat this humerus. Again, your patient is probably going to be presenting with their arm up like that, at least holding it in a supportive position. Remember, a humerus fracture is your upper arm, and we have all the same signs and symptoms that we're going to see with other fractures. Before I splint anything, same CSMs. Good pulse. Can you feel this? And skin color, temperature, and moisture. If I can have the patient hold their arm, that's the best. If not, try to get some assistance to do that. Now with a humerus, we really want to ensure that we have everything prepared because I don't want to be moving this back and forth too much. The less movement I can have, the more comfortable your patient's going to be. Again, I'm going to be using this malleable splint, but as I mentioned before, you can use other things. You can use a backpack, you can use a sleeping pad, you can use any of the materials that you might have with you, but you want to provide some support, some stabilization to this bone. As with a forearm fracture, I'm going to measure this, ensuring that I come up to the shoulder and down to the elbow. I can go beyond the elbow, but if I do, I want to make sure that I bend it around. This is the right size. Once I have all my material ready, I'm going to have my patient move their arm slightly out so that I have space to work in here. I want to add a bit of padding underneath between the arm and the patient's chest. This is going to add a little bit of room so that as the patient breathes, it's not putting too much pressure on the arm. So you would put some padding in here. I'm going to leave it out right now simply so you can better see how we build this splint. I've got my splint set up and I'm going to use my roller gauze once again to secure this splint. Remembering to always roll it towards the patient's arm. It just makes your life that much easier. And just as with the forearm fracture, to finish this off, simply take your loop, wrap it around, and then finish with one more loop. Now that I have a splinting device holding this in place, I want to now add my sling so this arm is not flopping around. This is where a big difference comes from a forearm fracture to an upper arm fracture. If I were to build my sling the same, putting that knot right here, what can happen is the support is actually going to push on the humerus, pushing it up. And imagine if these two bones are broken, it's going to cause a lot of pain. I'm going to support this arm in a different way. I'm going to take my cravat, my triangular bandage, and I'm actually going to wrap it around the patient's wrist. Just like that, a simple wrap. Now I'm going to come up and around their neck. Again, padding in behind and tie your knot off to the side. What this does is it allows me to support the patient's arm, but I'm supporting it from the wrist, which allows the elbow to pull down, to have gravity actually put some tension on this, which is going to cause a lot of pain relief. I still want to support this in because this can flop around. So just as before, I'm going to build my swaths. You have to be careful going across the broken arm. So I do want to go around. Just make sure that you're aware of where the break is. Same simple tie in the back. asking your patient if they can breathe. Wonderful. I now have a secure upper arm 
splint.